Hey everyone, guess what? We are joined here today by Megan and ENFJ and today we will be talking about the Myers-Briggs type indicator and the system of classifying people into 16 personality types. Does the MBTI suck? Does the MBTI have something to offer? What is the best thing about the MBTI and what is the worst? Hey there, Eric and Eric's channel. Um, my name is Megan Lavoda. I'd like to introduce myself just for a moment. Um, I am an ENFJ. I'm an Enneagram uh, 2 wing 3. My tri-type is 287. I've been interested in Myers-Briggs and typology and socionics and all of that stuff for almost four years now. Uh, I'm obsessed with Carl Jung. I love the cognitive functions more than anything else, and I'm going to try and keep this brief. Um, I'm really excited to be doing this collaboration, so I'm going to get started with Eric's questions. The first question that he asked me is, what is the main criticism that you would direct against the Myers-Briggs and how people use the Myers-Briggs today? So first off, I just want to credit the Myers-Briggs for taking a really complicated idea and making it simple. So they literally took the idea of the cognitive functions uh, from uh, Carl Jung and they tried to condense it into um, are you an extrovert or an introvert? Are you feeling or thinking? Are you sensing or intuitive? And these are very black and white dynamics that isn't always true with human behavior. And so it's not always accurate, but, you know, it really forces people to think about who they are. Like, okay, I am an extrovert or I'm this or whatever. And so it's a very black and white approach. And I totally credit them to making it, um, I credit them for making something complicated be simple. But I do think that, Myers-Briggs is not the end game, that there is more of human cognition to do and to learn. And I don't think it's perfect because I think that your test result is only as perfect as the person that took the test. And perfect is probably not the best word. What I mean is that your answers totally depend upon how self-aware you are. And if you aren't self-aware, then your answers are just not going to be accurate. And so it's really hard to manufacture self-awareness for people that don't have it, especially when you're asking such a black and white question. It's difficult for people that don't spend all day thinking about who they are and their tendencies to be able to know right off the bat because it really depends upon the time of the time their life time that they're going through like if they're in a relationship maybe they'll say that they're way more emotional but if they're not and they're focused on their career because they just graduated college maybe they would be more thinking like it it's it it's not quite there in the sense that it reads your external behavior and it's a very quick decision and it's it's not the most yeah so I'll just say, I also do not like the focus on career that it has. It is far too career oriented, whereas I, I don't think that the purpose of a personality test should be to funnel you into a career because if we think about it, don't we want industries to have a di have diversity of thought? Um, don't we want do we want all teachers to be ENFJs and all scientists to be INTPs? Or do we want people to do whatever career that they feel comfortable in and uh, work with people that think differently and expand their brain? You know, like, I don't really like the idea of thinking, like, that that's the purpose of the test. Because I think that the self-awareness that you gain from it is way more important. So, um, yeah. So moving on, I guess the cr main criticism that I have against the way that people use Myers-Briggs today is they either don't use it properly at all and it makes all the scientists and the thinkers and the logical people to be like, oh my god, like, there is no um, proof that this test is even real. Why are you guys buying into it? It totally just makes us look bad if we can't make the test actually be efficient and like retestable and have, you know, use the scientific theory. 
But I also think that a lot of people use it because they don't know who they are and they want a quick fix. And instead of um, internalizing and asking themselves, oh my gosh, who am I? What do I want? They would rather just attest, tell them who they are. So yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. They either use it way too much for career or they use it um, to try and figure themselves out in a quick, easy way. So my question for you now is, uh, how would you like the Myers-Briggs type indicator and the personality psychology theories out there to change for the future? What would you like to do next? I think that I would like to create a test that is more complicated, but still easy for people to understand. But I think that it would almost like work better if it worked like an algorithm where it put a lot of different roundabout ways of guessing about the functions to get your type. If it worked like an algorithm and wasn't as super simple, but it gave you the same result, the right result each time, I think that would be good. And because the, the people taking the test, they don't need to know the theory. They just need to take it and then get the right answer and get the right result. The, pe the theory, that can lead to the people that want to learn about it or whatever. But I think that basing it more based off of the cognitive functions and really getting rid of stereotypes, getting rid of actions and going back into your brain and to the cognition, I really just want to focus on the cognition and not focus on behavior because behavior has so much to do with your situation of life, how you were raised, the culture of the country you grew up in, like what your expectations on you are, like your identity. There's just so many different things that influence it that I think makes it really difficult. I just want to go back into the brain, get rid of all that crap and all that influences. Okay, I love that answer. I really like that answer. But if there's one thing I would like to add to it, it is that while more scientific tests is a great idea, we should definitely work on that. We should definitely work on adding and testing ourselves in relation to neuroscience, to new research, to psychology, and to modern research. Uh, I think that in the end, the most important thing, and I build tests, I make tests, uh, I make personality tests online on my website as well, is not to have the perfect scientific test that is always 100% accurate and that can measure everything perfectly and has a perfect category for everything, but I want to test that gives people a meaning and understanding about themselves. That's the main expectation I have on myself. I want people who answer the questions to introspect on themselves, where they are headed in life, how they live their lives, how they want to live their lives, what they can do to be more in touch with themselves, who they are at the, this moment and who they are at their best. If I can get people to know these things, I can help them make better decisions in life and I can help them take action towards what they want. That's the goal of my personality tests and then someone else can develop a test that is scientific and that will always work in every scenario. But I'm still a little skeptical sometimes because I think human experience is just so subjective and we are all consciously going to experience the world differently. So it's not always about being able to perfectly define human experience <laughs> and it's not necessarily possible because everyone reads language differently. One word means a different thing to another person than it does to you. So that also affects how people answer. And that is also why the MTI struggles so much to provide good testing. So how can we make the cognitive functions in the Jungian theory more easy to apply and understand traumas? So as far as being easy to apply, I still think that there needs to be work done in order to make the test um, easier. But let's just... Let's just assume that we have our the right type. Like, let's assume that you already know your type and you're trying to apply the functions to understand your traumas and your psychological problems and various other life issues. I would say you should focus on your inferior function and stop putting so much pressure on it. Now that is not I'm not the first person to come up with that theory. A lot of people talk about that. I would say Someone that is in trauma, I would suggest um, use more of your third function because you're probably ignoring it. Lay off on the fourth function. Stop, pre stop putting so much pressure on it and just move out, like zoom out. 
I also would suggest acknowledge that your fifth function exists. For me as an ENFJ, that's introverted feeling. So that's like the inverse of your top function, basically. Acknowledge that it exists because all day, every day, you're on your dominant function. You sort of forget the deep root. Like for all extroverts, this is like the deep root behind what you're expressing. For all introverts, this is like um, recognizing the outward breadcrumbs that you are showing about the root that you are dwelling in all the time. So either way, acknowledging that that exists, I think, is really important to... Um, Oh, wait, I realize that I'm answering the question of how to solve traumas or whatever. But basically, yeah, um, how to understand your traumas and psychological problems. I don't think that there's a one-size-fits-all for this. But I, one other thing that I want to add is pay close attention to your, uh, to your blind spot function, so your seventh function. So just be aware that you have a blind spot. And when you're going through life, you don't know everything. I think that's really helpful. And try and look at the patterns of what are the things that I'm constantly bumping into over and over. And a lot of times it's your blind spot. Like for me, it's introverted sensing has been fucking me over my entire life. And it's only that when I start to realize that, oh, I have a blind spot here. Maybe I'm a little more cautious. Maybe I'm not just bumping into things all the time. I'm never going to like solve it completely. But just being aware that that blind spot exists is important. How can we see behind a person's persona into their real type? So I could get very spiritual here if I'd like. Um, I, I definitely think it's possible to see someone's real persona, but I think that you just have to get them thriving. You have to get them to a point where they're not lying to themselves. And do And just you have to get rid of every limiting belief before you can get behind a person's real persona. You have to um, be there for them, make them comfortable. And their real type is going to be who they really are when they feel free and not when they're trying to be someone that they're not. Yeah, it's very true that personas are really difficult to maintain and to hold up. And I think we do get very defensive when people question us on them. But I think the main reason we do get defensive on it is because uh, we think and we tend to go into these personas just because we have been told as kids by our teachers, by life, by society, by society, this is how you should be. And if other people are questioning us on it or critiquing us for it, we get angry and we get offended because here I spend in so much energy and effort and stress into being like this. And now you're questioning me on it. Like we expect a reward and we expect to get the return and positive uh, gratification from holding it up. We expect it from our environment where being ourselves, you know, when you are yourself, the good thing about being yourself is you don't need anyone to tell you you're doing the right thing because you feel it in yourself. You feel motivation and positive energy just from within yourself, regardless of what anyone else thinks. A person that is struggling to be true to their real type is going to be very defensive and is going to have a hard time admitting their flaws because at some point, for some reason, they don't accept themselves who they are. They're trying to be someone that they're not. And so some judgment that they have about who they are, they think is absolutely not okay. A person that is comfortable in their own skin is going to be aware of their own flaws and be okay with that. Common signs and issues do you see in a person trying to be something that they're not? If someone is trying to be something that they're not, they like I said, very defensive. They are not comfortable in their own skin. They are always justifying their behavior and being like, oh, haha, I'm so this way. And trying to like do things. Maybe they'll be in a career or maybe they'll be around friends that don't make them feel light and free and like themselves. So yeah, and so going back to the other question, sorry if this sucks for your editing purposes, but how can we see behind a person's persona into their real type? It would be to really cut through all of those signs. Like, I think it's possible, even if it's not the most scientific way, I think it's totally possible to notice, like, oh my god, this person is deflecting in some way, they're being defensive, and really try and ask them the tough questions. Like, what's bothering you? Um, why do you want to seem special so bad? 
Why do you want to seem smart all the time? Do you think you're not smart? Are you saying this because you want to be smart and you don't think you are? Or like asking those sort of questions can really help people pull the layers back. But if someone doesn't feel comfortable, they aren't going to be their true selves around you. And if they don't feel comfortable in society, if they feel like society's trying to push them to be something, then they're going to be stuck in a persona that's not true. So we have arrived at the end of this video uh, with one final question. Does the MTI suck? So, last question. Does the Myers-Briggs suck? I personally have never taken the Myers-Briggs, like, the official test. And so I'm not going to sit here and say that it sucks. Like I sort of mentioned, like, we're not done yet. We shouldn't just assume, oh, we have this test. It's good. Like, all right, move on. Like, there are ways to improve it. And I would like to continue improving it. I do believe wholeheartedly that there is such a thing as there are 16 types. I see it. I feel it. I sense the functions in people when I first meet them. I always just think of it as there is like human cognition, which is every single person's unique. And then the 16 types is dividing into equal 16 parts. And there's going to be variation within each of those. And I do believe that the 16 types is... It's a thing. The Myers-Briggs could be better at identifying them and making it easier for people that, as opposed to putting on the bur- putting the burden on the person to be more self-aware, I think the test should be more self-aware of what human nature is and figure out how to make it more repeatable and more based on the functions and your cognition so that it can almost guess like what you're going to answer without making the person... I don't know, because humans lie to themselves all the time, you know? Like, it sh- this should be a working system that will repeatedly guess uh, how people will answer. So, um, I hope that you enjoyed my answers. Um, thanks for watching, and thank you so much for collaborating with me, Eric. Bye! Okay, that was perfect. Thank you, Megan, for joining up, and thank you for doing this collaboration. For all of you who want to hear more on this topic, Go to Megan's channel, I will post the link down below, and there you can hear my thoughts and perspectives on this topic.